Hi, my name is Catherine Fritz, and this is my Formations of Islam to 1500 final project. Please do not subscribe because this is my final. Today we're going to go and check out some of the recipes from books such as Scents and Flavors and the Annals of the Caliph's Kitchen, a Syrian and a Baghdadi cookbook. So we're gonna watch me cook some recipes and we're also gonna follow some of the traditions that are surrounded by these recipes. As we are watching this, please note that I tried my best to adapt these recipes to a modern kitchen, as well as washing my hands before and after every task that I do, which is important in these cookbooks and note it quite often. We are starting the recipes off with this simple rose water recipe. First, what we do is take dried rose petals. Then we put in a cup and over, we pour boiling water on top. Then we wait a few hours for the rose petals to steep. Once steeped, remove the previous petals and then you have your rose water. There you go. Following this, we have our pomegranate seed smoothie recipe. This recipe starts off by slicing open your pomegranate. After you slice it open, this is not shown on camera, but you proceed to take all the seeds. With the seeds, you put them in a blender along with mint, mint, sugar, and then rose water from previous recipe. Once in the blender, you blend them up together. And then I strained the smoothie because the seeds were just really rough, but that was not in the original recipe. So this was part of my own adaptation. Then you have your smoothie. Now we have our padded bread recipe. First, we start off with flour and salt yeast. We put three cups of flour inside of a bowl. Then you proceed with two teaspoons of yeast. I keep my yeast in a dry spot in a mason jar just up on the shelf. Then you put some cups of water inside, and then you knead that all together. This is the padded part. Once kneaded, then you let this rest and rise. I put in front of the fire, not part of the recipe, but it sped the process up. Then you put olive oil over the risen bread and you knead this down and put this into your pot. I'm using a Dutch oven. The lid allows the bread to bake moistly and then when you take it off it allows the top part of the bread to become really crisp and you can see this afterwards with the nice coloring over here i turn the bread over and you can really see how crisp it is at the bottom now we have our cauliflower with a walnut glaze recipe we're going to start this recipe off by chopping up our cauliflower then we put it into a pot of boiling salted water after, we grind walnuts into a nice smooth paste. Then we're chopping up some garlic, putting this with olive oil and boiling water into a bowl along with our garlic. Then we're putting this into a pan and mashing up some pistachios. Off camera, we put the cauliflower in the pan with all of this, and then we sprinkle over pistachios, caraway seed, and some olive oil to top this off. So now we have our lamb stuffed eggplant recipe. This was definitely the most grueling recipe, if you would say that. First, we chop up our eggplant, we're taking the tops off, and then we're cutting them in half as evenly as possible. Then we're gonna scoop out the eggplants, but we're taking the insides and we're putting this aside so that we can use this for later. Once we have those all scooped out, we're gonna start on the lamb 
and we're gonna put that in a pan and we're gonna brown that. Then we're gonna put our spices in the pan. So we're using caraway seed, we're using cinnamon, we're using black pepper, and then we're using a beef tallow. Here's our previous eggplants, and we're gonna stir these all up and we'll put them aside. After we put them aside, we're gonna brown the outside of the eggplants. And we're gonna try our best to really get a nice even browning on both sides. We're putting more tallow in, and then we're going to scoop our insides and put that into the eggplants. Then once we brought it all together, we can plate this and we're gonna to top this off with some salt and pepper. So I chose to start off the recipes that I create in this video because rose water is something that's found in a multitude of recipes throughout uh, these cookbooks. It's found in drinks, um, as we can see in the pomegranate smoothie, but it's also found in desserts, in savory dishes, in breads. Um, it's really one of those base ingredients that's found over and over again, which is why I thought it was important to create it uh, as the opening um, of the recipes. The preceding order of the recipes follows what I consider to be the traditional way to serve food, starting off with drinks and then going to breads and then having a lighter dish, which was the cauliflower, and then going to the heavier entree which was the stuffed eggplant. Um, so I thought that that order was necessary as that's how uh, we and that's how the feast book really orders the different recipes. One of the main differences that I found between my creations and what each recipe called for was that most of my herbs have been dried um, and pre-prepared, whereas the herbs that are called for in the different recipes are fresh herbs. And as noted in the uh, Sher Harazad's Feast book, um, this is really because they had access to these herbs fresh, and although they could preserve it, and that was certainly a way of drying um, that they used them, uh, it was just much more convenient uh, for the people at the time to use these herbs fresh, which is not how we're used to them today because I don't, I don't have access to fresh mint, whereas they did, which is why they used it. Another large difference I noticed while trying to recreate these recipes was the difference between the books um, and as well uh, was the measurements. So one of the books had measurements that had been adapted for a modern kitchen. The scents and flavors did not have any measurements. There is a general flow of things, um, but that was all by taste, by hand. And the annals of the Caliph's kitchen did have measurements. However, they were for vast quantities and they were very hard to convert. Um, an example of this was when I was trying to make the bread, which is in the, their humors and bread section, um, called for seven pounds of flour, which is converted to somewhere around 32 cups. Whereas when I make a loaf of bread, which I sometimes do, I typically only use four or five cups for a loaf. So clearly a lot of these recipes were made for feasts and they were um, made for special occasions and that's why these specific ones were written down. But overall the measurements or lack thereof was uh, very different from the cookbooks that I am used to and that was an interesting adaptation that I had to make quite often. Furthermore, this is noted in the Sense and Flavors cookbook um, because it is clear, they say, that scribes were not the cooks. So essentially they, they made a lot of numerical errors 
because they did not understand the conversions. And so a lot of times they would just write down what would make the most sense to them. But as a cook, if you if you have the wrong measurements and the wrong proportions, especially for something like baking, that can really throw off the recipe. So a lot of the recipes have had to be done over and over again to um, help perfect them. Of these hundreds of recipes that I looked through and read and of the four or five that I chose, there were thousands for the organizers and the contributors of these books to go through. And I can only imagine how hard it was to really decide which ones to write down and which to include or which not to include. And each recipe is certainly very different. And all of these recipes are so special to those who have been making them for clearly thousands of years, which is why I noted earlier on why they were so perfected and why to this day I'm able to make them even with ingredients as we've seen have really developed in different ways and uh, as far as the biology of the ingredients I'm not going to go into that but I can only imagine how much the flavors have developed I mean if you look at a banana the bananas used to be filled with seeds in the way that we've biologically differed them um they have a completely different taste, but for these recipes to last for so long, despite all of the changes that we've had in our environments, in our foods, in our cultures, is truly amazing, which is why I chose to do recipes and why I chose to do these ones and why I ate everything that I made, um, or at least as much as I could. And I really, I enjoyed making these and I enjoyed going through them. And I read most of these books uh, for fun, even after I chose which recipes I was doing and um, I'm going to continue to make these. Uh, it, was, it was a really enjoyable journey and I wish I had used the fireplace more, but I'm glad that you, my viewers, are able to experience this with me. Uh, thank you for watching.